Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 21 of the platform specific series of my 68000 assembly tutorials. Now, we looked last time at how to get the Z80 processor of the Genesis to use the FM sound chip to make some simple sound effects. We're going to do the same this time, however, we're going to cut out the Z80 work. We're just going to do things directly from the 68000, which to be honest makes a lot more sense if we're just making simple beeps. The Z80 is great if we're trying to make music and we want something to handle playing the sound for us. But if we're just trying to make the odd beep, then it's really more work than it's necessary. So this time we're just going to use the 68000 itself and we're going to write my Chibi Sound program on just the 68000. If you've not seen any of the previous episodes, Chibi Sound is a driver that came from my 8 bit tutorials. It uses a single byte, there's six bits which define a pitch, there's one bit which defines a low or high volume, and there's one bit that defines a tone, either a normal tone or a distorted one, which will use the LFO effect of the FM sound chip for in this case. So let's actually hear the tutorial we're going to be looking at today. So here's the example. You can see this is the bike going down and as it goes down the pitch gets higher. When the top bit becomes 1 it becomes more distorted and when the second bit, bit 6, becomes lower it then it will become more quiet. So you can hear the various kinds of sound here and you can see the wave being generated just here. So a really simple example here. This was used in Grime 68000 so um, this, this is what I create for all of the systems I cover. So we're going to look at this today. Now this is the code that actually does the playing of the sound but it's very straightforward. So really all it does is it loads a byte into D0, it repeatedly shows that byte to the screen and then it waits a while and calls Chibi Sound, then it decreases the byte and loops. So very simple really and all of the work is actually being done in here. Now first of all we need to discuss how the FM sound chip works on the Genesis. Well it works the exact same way as it did on the Neo Geo. The Genesis chip is superior but it's backwards compatible effectively with the Neo Geo one. But I'm going to assume you didn't see that series of course so we're going to go over the basics today. Now essentially this chip has 255 registers, you can see the hexadecimal representations here and they're split up. Some are common to all of the channels, some are operator based, I'll explain what an operator is in just a moment, and some are channel based here. Now the Neo Geo chip only had four channels but the Genesis has a, a full six channels so it has two extra channels. A channel itself is made up of multiple sounds so you're combining various waveforms together to make a single sound and these various waveforms are referred to as the operators. So each channel has the potential for up to four operators to combine together in different ways to make a sound and the algorithms combine those operators to define the way the sound actually is formed. Now you can see there's various options here, there's some quite weird terms like sustain and decay and attack which make no sense to me if you don't understand um, what, how the sound works but essentially the volume of the sound over time varies and it, it's basically designed to represent a sort of piano key or something like that where the volume will change in different ways over periods of time. So when you immediately press the key down the volume will accelerate quite quickly and then there will be a, a, a brief drop off, a longer term drop off and then when you lift the key back up the sound will fade away to nothing. And so that's what we have this attack, then a decay, then a sustain and then a release that represent these different stages of the tone. Now. I'm not really skilled enough in the, the sound kind of things to go into this in detail. We're just creating a super simple sound that's either on or off, but we need to know these terms so we need to understand which ones of our registers we need to change. And we've also, of course, got total level, which is the actual volume itself. So that's how we're going to define things today. Now you'll see these registers go, for example, looking at multiplier and detune from hexadecimal 30 to 3E. Now on the Neo Geo they went from 31 to 3E, so that 30 register was missing. That's how we've got the extra channels on the Genesis, we've got one extra channel and in this example we're going to use 31 because our code is essentially kind of compatible with the Neo Geo version and that's how we were able to run the Neo Geo Z80 code almost unchanged on our Genesis. So that was just a little bit of a trick to get the code to work on both, but we could use any of these channels in exactly the same way today. Now we've got a lot of channels here, we've got six channels and you'll notice that channel 1, 2 and 3 here are on this column and 4, 5 and 6 are on this column. Now you see these registers only cover three channels so if we want to use channels 1, 2 and 3 we have to use a particular set of ports. If we're going to use 4, 5 and 6 we have to use a different set of ports. 
So with the base address of 4000, which is the Z80 address, to be honest, we're going to look at the 16 bit 68000 address. But if, if we write to memory address 4000, one of these values, we will select a register for channels one, two or three. We then write the new value for that register to 4001. And that will allow us to set, for example, the multiplier if we wrote hexadecimal 30 to 4000. And then we wrote a new value to the multiplier for, to 4001. That would set channel 1 operator 1. If we wrote the same hexadecimal 30, though, to 4002 and then a value to 4003, we would set channel 4's value. So this is how we are able to use the same registers with two sets of ports to to write to these two pairs of registers of channel sets. So channel one, two, and three on these addresses here, four, five, and six on these addresses here. Now we're, we're gonna be really simple today. We're just using a single channel. So we don't need to worry about this second set here. But if you're looking at the documentation and you don't understand this concept that there's basically the same registers doing two sets of channels using these two port pairs, you're gonna get a bit confused. So I just wanted to explain it there even if it's really outside of the scope of what we're looking at today. Now, as we discussed last time, the Z80 range is accessible from the 68000 by starting the address with A0 here. So A0 quadruple zero would be the start of the Z80 range and A0 FFFF would be the end of the Z80 range. So we can access those registers by just using A0 four triple zero and A0 four double zero one. And we're doing that by adding one here to A0. And this allows us to set the registers so that's what we're going to be doing today. But whenever we want to set a register, we do need to check that the FM chip isn't busy, especially with a very fast CPU like the 68000. So what we're doing here is we've got a function called set sound reg pause. And what this does is it reads in from the A0400 address, and then it tests the top bit. And if the top bit is non-zero, then we have to repeat a round. And this is going to wait until the chip is ready. Now, to be honest, we do check the same register, even if we were going to use the 4002.3 range, it's still the 4000 address we read in from. So that's how we wait for the, the FM chip to be ready for us. So whenever we want to set a register, we're using this simple function here. We're calling this, and all we need to do is load D0 with the register we want to set. So for example, for this case, B5, and then D1 with the new value we want to give this register, in this case, 0. And that's what we're going to see an awful lot in today's example, because we're going to be setting all of these registers depending on our settings. And that's how we're going to get the FM chip to play the kind of sound we want. Okay. Now, the first thing we need to do is, um, although we're not going to use that Z80, we need to get it out of the way because it's going to be locking up all of these addresses unless we do something about it. So what we're doing here is we're requesting the address from the Z80. And then what we're doing is we're actually resetting the Z80. So this effectively locks up the Z80. So the Z80 is now no longer functioning. We've got total control of the Z80 address range, and that's how we can use our sound chip. If we disable these lines here, you, the, the sound chip wouldn't work for us. So the first thing we're doing there, just shutting off that Z80 altogether, and we're never going to turn it back on in this example. Now, the Chibi sound program only uses a single byte. So what we're doing here is we're wiping out all the other bits just in case there's any other junk in the D0 when we were called. Now, Chibi Sound has a special case where if all of the bits are zero, we actually silence the sound. So that's what we're doing here. We're just checking if it's zero, and then we're branching to this silence routine just here. And the first thing we're doing is we're using register 28 here. Now, register 28 is the key on register. What this does is it allows us to set which operators are active for a channel. So this effectively starts or stops a key. Now we're, we're setting all of the operators to off for channel one, which um, in this representation here, channel one is actually channel two in, in the way that this is represented. It, this is going from one to six, but in the binary representation, it's zero to five. So possibly a little bit misleading there, but we're, um, we're setting that second channel to off here by, by disabling all of the operators here. Then what we're doing is we're actually muting both of the speakers. This L and R here are the left and right speakers. So we're detaching this channel from both speakers, effectively muting it. So there's going to be no sound going on there. So that's how we're silencing the speakers in this case. Okay, so if the D0 was zero there, we've actually silenced the chip and returned now. But if we are not going to do that, we want to actually make some sounds. So what we're doing here first is we're flipping all of the bits of the pitch because the pitch has 
these six bits just here but they're actually the wrong way around. We want things to get higher as the number goes lower and that's not the way the FM chip works. So we're flipping the bits over. Then what we're doing is we're backing up D0 into D3. We're gonna to have to do various calculations. We're using D0 as our temporary register. So we're just backing up into D3. What we're doing here is we're actually taking the volume bit and we are just going to flip it around and move it to the right twice. Now you see, we've only got a single volume bit in our definition here and we actually want to have it in a position where it gives a nice loud volume if it's set to one and a medium volume if it's set to zero. So the way I found it works best is if we rotate it to the right twice, but we do need to flip it over as well. On the FM chip, zero is loudest and 127 is quietest. So that's quite kind of backwards in my mind, but that's the way it works. So we're doing that, we're flipping it over and we're using register 4D here. Now you'll see this is operator four of channel two. We're always using channel two because as I said before, on the Neo Geo, that channel one didn't effectively exist. And we're using operator four because operator four, if you look at all of these algorithms, is essentially the end of the chain. So we only want to use one operator. So if we use algorithm one, for example, operator four is right at the end. So it's the simplest sound. That's why we're using that. And we're gonna use operator four in all cases here. Okay, so we've set our volume and we've decided that we are going to make some sound. Now it's time to work with the pitch. So we're getting our original byte back from D3. We're selecting two bits of the pitch here, rotating them to the right four times, and we're just slotting them in here. Now we're going to use register A5 here, which sets what's known as the octave and three bits of the, the pitch here. Now for us to get a good sound, we're having to set these three always to one, and we're putting the top two bits of our past register into this position here. And then we're setting A5 here. Now, A5 you'll notice here is constant to the channel. It's not done at the operator level, it's done at the channel level, but we're only setting the high pitch here. We're gonna set the low pitch in just a moment. And here it is. So we've got four bits remaining because we use the top two here. So we get them here, rotate them to the left, and then we send them to register A1 here. Again, I was using the set sound command here. Now we've set the volume and the pitch. So the next thing we want to do is decide what kind of tone we're going to make. We're either going to make a distorted tone using the LFO or a regular tone without the LFO. So we test that top bit. The top bit zero, we jump down to no noise. But if we were going to run this code, then we are making a noise. So the LFO is a constant function at number 22 here. Here it is. So the first thing we need to do is turn it on here and set a frequency, but we do have to turn it on in quite a few places. We'll look at the others later. So we set a frequency with these three bits here and we set enabled here and we set this register just in the usual way. Then what we need to do is we're gonna set the left and right channels to enabled. We'll do this for the no noise version as well because we always need to enable the channels or we won't hear it. So we do that, but then these other bits here are defining how the LFO affects the amplitude and the frequency. And we need it to affect the amplitude or frequency because otherwise we won't have any difference in our sound. So that's what we're doing there. Here's the alternate version, disabling the LFO. And then this one is just, you can see, connecting the speaker left and right to the channel so that we get a monotone, but we're not setting any A and F bits here, so there's no LFO effect, although the LFO is already disabled here anyway. Okay, so now what we're doing here is we're setting an algorithm. We're setting the first algorithm, although to be honest, being as we're only using operator four, it doesn't make a big difference, but we, we're just setting that anyway. And then we're setting the detune and the multiplier. We're setting the multiplier to one. That affects the pitch. So we do need to set something there, even though it's not really something we're very interested in. We set the attack rate to maximum here. That's to make the sound start as fast as possible. We're setting the top bit here, which is the amplitude mod enable. Now this is relating to the LFO again. It has no effect on this no noise version, but it does have a big effect we need to set it for this noise version. So we're setting it to one in both cases. The decay rate we're setting to zero. The decay rate's not really very important because when we want the sound to stop, we're actually muting the channel altogether. We're then setting the sustain and release rate to maximum here. Again, we want the sound to be constant. So the sustain rate is quite important. We've now set everything we need to make the sound we want. So in the same way as we stopped the channel before when we were muting things, now we're setting operator four of 
channel one here, bit one, which is effectively channel two, according to our list here, which is the one we've been setting all along. We want to start that and we do that with port hexadecimal 28. Once again, you can see the same one as we use there. So, I mean, it's really quite straightforward to make simple sounds. If, if you want very precise sounds and if you want very complex sounds, you know, if you wanted to merge multiple sound effects together to make a more complex instrument, you know, you're going to need some um, work and practice doing that. But at least for making very basic sounds, you know, it's not too bad. And once you've got something playing, you can kind of play around and see what sounds good and take things from there. So hopefully this example, you know, able to play a simple sound and giving you a simple function to change the sounds will be a, a good starting point if you want to do something a bit more advanced. Now, that's all we're going to cover today. Just as a reminder, we did last week how to play sounds via the Z80 chip. And a long time ago in my Z80 series, we did cover how to use the Sega Master System emulation because it's backwards compatible, the Genesis. So we can use the Sega Master System's more limited sound effects, which do create some good effects and actually in some ways create better noise effects than this. So if, if you don't want to work with it in this way, you could use the Z80 or you can use that backwards compatibility to make the sound you want. And if you're just doing a very simple game, they're all probably fine. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Thanks for watching and goodbye. If you enjoyed today's lesson, please check out my website. We've got tutorials, source code and development tools for 6502, 68000 and Z80 systems and a lot more systems coming in the future. We're going to be covering the 8086 and the ARM and a few other things as well going forward. And if you've liked this lesson, if you've got questions, comments or suggestions on how it could be made better, please consider signing up to my forum. It's free, of course, and you can come along here and you can make suggestions, you can ask questions. And if you've got assembly projects you're working on, please let us know what they are. Maybe show off a few screenshots, tell us what things you've found interesting or what tricks you've come up with, because we'd love to know about it. Anyway, thanks for watching today and goodbye.